everyone, it's Lawrence here. I'm here to talk about my top five guitarists. So let's go straight off the bat. Number five, Chris Poland. Chris Poland was the first guitarist from Megadeth. He played on their first two albums. Uh, most notably for my influence was Peace Sales, but who's buying their second one? And the guitar playing on that record is kind of funny in a way because I feel like Chris Poland was just a guy, he was a fusion jazz guitarist who just bought a distortion pedal and decided to join a metal band. And there's a whole lot of blues in his playing as well. So it's a, it's a re really good mix and it always makes me smile listening to him. It's just it's so kind of, I'm so envious, I wish I could sound just like that. Uh, so if, if I'm selling it correctly, go and listen to the Peace Sales album and enjoy some of that wonderful guitar work. Number four, uh, going back a wee bit on the, in the eras, Jimi Hendrix. I kind of consider Jimi Hendrix a bit of a, a bit of a, what would you call him? An alien, an extraterrestrial. He basically came out of nowhere and had properties that no one else had. And although everyone focuses on the guitar playing, you've got to consider his wonderful songs and his great singing as well. And on top of that, his whole stage presence, his whole era was just, it was just fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, it, it says a lot considering that he is the most emulated guitarist of all time. You can't listen to the radio for more than 15 minutes without hearing something that derives from him and his influence. Okay, number, oh wait, for a recommendation, I recommend that you listen to... Foxy Lady, live in Miami, 1968. And Noel Redding and Mitch Mitchell and his band are absolutely killing it as well. Number three, Ingvi Malmsteen. Now, I'm kind of a selective fan of Ingvi Malmsteen in a way. I, I like him when he's young. I don't. I feel like he, he aged badly. And I know he's an ego maniac. And I know that, you know, he, he plays way too many notes. I can agree with that. But his work with Alcatraz, particularly with Graham Bonnet, was great. So I recommend that everyone listens to the Live in Alcatraz, no sorry, Live in Japan, Alcatraz 1984. Some of the most blistering, wonderful, seat your pants, rock and roll, technical rawr, guitar playing that you've ever heard in your entire life. It's really, really something. Not to mention he's young and gorgeous and you know, you, you can't help but want to be him. So, uh, number two, Nuno Betancourt. To me, Nuno Betancourt seems like the best all-rounder. He's a wonderful guitarist, both of riffs and lead playing in ways of melody and shredding. He is a great piano player, a great singer, a great songwriter, both with extreme and with his solo stuff. He is also just pretty much a beautiful man, isn't he? He's, he's absolutely stunning. I mean, let's face it, uh, who wouldn't want to look like Nuno Betancourt? He's, he's like Johnny Depp, except for me can actually play the guitar. Sorry, Johnny. Number one, Dimebag Dial. Dimebag Dial is one of my favourite guitarists in the same way that Panther is one of my favourite bands. The whole outfit just fits. And, you know, he... he is in such a heavy band, yet his solos are so melodic and, and just kind of make you feel a certain way, make you feel the way a guitarist should make you feel. Um, I think also just, you know, his personality, the fact that he, he had, you know, guitars that were ridiculous shapes and that he was a really lovely guy with a big heart and he knew how to party. Just, you get everything out of a attitude-driven metal band guitarist that you should. So... Let me know uh, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm right, if you think I missed out anything essential, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Ta-da. Bye-bye now. Man!